take 37 of trying to do this voiceover. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a great week so far. Um, so last night I wanted to play in my art journal just for the sake of playing in my art journal and I thought it would be fun to turn the camera on and realize now that that really stressed me out. Um, but anyways, I'll talk about that in a second, but I'm just using up a two pages in my composition notebook that I put excess paint on and I first sketched out the, the main shape. It's one of those, um, I can't think of what they're called. It's like a Mexican folk art, tin heart type thing. I did it in another art journal or maybe I did it on a canvas. I don't remember, but I think I've done it a couple times. I don't know why, but I love them and I wanted to do something a little bit more controlled and more, um, not so, I don't know, not, not so free. And I, and I had a plan for it and I wanted clean lines and, and, uh, so that's where we're going with this. So I started with some white gesso, which I'm just trying to use up. It's my, uh, artist loft level three, not a huge fan of it. And it's almost gone. Thank goodness. Cause I prefer my more runny liquid gesso. Um, so I started out with a hot pink heart. I didn't like it because the paint was very transparent. So I went over it with a darker pink. But at the end, you'll see when it dries, it's still very fluorescent pink. I mean, it goes with the teal, which at hindsight, I should have done a different blue because it clashes too much with the background blue. But again, art journaling is, I mean, for me is practice. It's not something that... Um, you know, I'm expecting to paint a masterpiece in unless I turn the camera on and then I want to give up because I think it looks like crap. And then I go through this whole imposter syndrome conversation in my head while I'm recording. And then I have to tell myself who cares if it's perfect or not. Um, it's your art journal and it's for practice, even though I still want it to look good. And I still, there's something about putting your art out there, putting anything out there on social media where you feel like it has to be perfect, you know, um, because this is what we're conditioned to see and think, because I'm pretty sure social media has ruined our society as a whole. As great as it is, it is a, I think it's been very detrimental, but that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother time. Um, so I did white over that blue because I didn't want the green, the yellow and the blue to mix to create green, even though I tried to write, write, I tried to let all my layers dry, you still, it ends up, you know, when you're working with a little bit of a transparent in your transparency in your paints, you still pull the mixed colors. Um, so I grabbed just my regular white Windsor, I think it's Windsor Newton. Yeah, my white acrylic and did some dots around the edge which I thought I was gonna go with one thing and then I ended up changing it more than once um, but I did like that paint. I do like that paint better because it is, uh, more, it's more soft bodied, if you will. Um, and I do work a lot with stencils in my art because I, I mean, I don't make any, I, I don't try to hide that. I cannot draw very well and I know with practice I'd get better, but I, I don't know. I like stencil art. I always have. It gives me that very graffiti feeling. Um, so on this, I just stenciled three traditional roses, traditional in the stencil sense, but then outlined them in a black to make them look a little bit more ab abstract and doodly. And I did do that. I started on camera, but it was taking forever. So I decided to, to uh, finish it off camera just because it was, it was a process. I used a, I don't know what the technical term for the brush is, but they're they remind me of pinstriping brushes. They have a very fine, thin brush. Um, and then I used my golden fluid acrylic, which is probably my favorite paint to use because it, it is so fluid and it's very opaque depending on the colors. Um, I like my Daler Rowney fluid acrylics, but they tend to be a little bit more transparent. So here I'm just doing some black swirls over those white dots, which I end up changing because I don't like it at all when I come back to it this morning. Because I, like I said, I started this last night and then I got frustrated and it got late and I got tired and 
I decided to walk away from it. A lot of times, if I'm not feeling something, I will walk away from it. Or if I think it needs something, I'll walk away from it for a day or two and then go back to it with kind of fresh eyes. I think that's normal when you do any kind of art. So here I'm just taking the teal I used and cleaning up the lines. So you can't see that green that was created using that mustardy yellow color on top of the blue. Um, like I said, I wanted this to have very clean, structured looking lines in it. I don't know why, just because. Um, but you can see here, I did off camera again, I went over those swirls with red paint and decided to just make some dots. And um, then I drew some leaves and I was having a heck of a time with that leaf right there. I think it's that one. Um, and then I filled it in and realized it was way too transparent. So I filled all of them in that I drew and then went back over it with a different color, more of an olivey green. And then I realized my paint was chunky and coagulated. So <laughs> that didn't work either. So then I think I ended up going over it again with another paint, which was very transparent. Um, Oh, yep, I did the white because it just wasn't working for me. So I did some more white gesso so that my green would really stand out. So there's probably, let's see, one, two, four or five layers of paint on those leaves that I tried to draw. Again, it's just my art journal. It's not that important. It's it's not a big deal. And I, pr I used just too small of a brush and the paint was too thick and it was just <sighs> the struggle. Man, I'm telling you. As soon as I turn that camera on, I'm, I turn into a, a person that can't do anything <laughs> or so it feels like it. But yeah, this is the paint that was really lumpy and clumpy and I tried to mix it with water to get it to, to smooth out and that wasn't working. So I finished putting the coating on all the leaves and then I dried it and then I went back with a different brand of paint which is, I think, a deco art, and it's very transparent. I bought a few of these bottles, I think, at Michael's. They had gone on clearance, and I thought I'd try them, and yeah, I can see why they stopped selling them. Um, so I went over it again, tried to clean up the mess that I had made with the first green, dried the layers. I'm impatient, so my heat tool is like my best friend. I definitely use it a lot which is not the same as letting it dry and cure completely. It just kind of dries the top layer enough to keep working on it. But again, it's my art journal. I don't really, very rarely do I scan or digitize anything in my art journal because it's a practice. I, I'll try and replicate it. I mean, I have to really love it and know that I can't replicate it at all in order to scan a page and, and fix it in Photoshop and use it that way. Um, so my Posca pens, I just kind of was creating some highlights and some, some contrast here, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then, I think, oh, there I'm just doodling a little scallopy border before I go in with my pen and make it permanent. Because even though you can clean up acrylic paint if you don't like it, it it's a mess. So I tried to make it a little bit easier on myself. Oh, this is where I was having a heck of a problem. There's so much texture and the pages are so bent from all of the paint that drawing straight lines with my brush, my paintbrush, was, was giving me fits. I should have, hindsight, gone over it just with my Posca pen so I could put more pressure down on the paper, but I didn't. I was stubborn and I just wanted to keep, keep it real and, and show the, the struggle even though it's really fast. Um, so I'm just giving my leaves a little bit of detail here and, and trying to make them stand out and, and have a little bit of definition. And then I think I finish it off in the background with a stamp because that's my go-to. I did decide to outline the whole thing to make that teal stand up, stand out from that blue a little bit more. <laughs> Um, my Posca pens, I swear, these are the, I don't know where these have been all my life, but I want them in every color now. And they seem to last a really long time. And then I think I go through, yes, and I outline the pink heart just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. 
at the end. You'll see it in a second. And I just wanted to put some swirls. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do in the background. So I, like I said, I was frustrated and just kind of wanting this page to be done. So I added some white and that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed the process. I know it's not the best quality. I'm still learning how to do this whole YouTube. Oh, I did some splatters with some, some paint. Um, and then I'll put in a photo at the end so you can really see it. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I would love your feedback or to know if I'm the only one that feels like an imposter as soon as the camera gets turned on. Have a wonderful rest of your day, guys. Thanks for watching.